This is the Supernatural Marriage Course with Debola Dejikumi. Be blessed as you listen and take action. Module 1 Introductions and Setting the Tone by Debola Dejikumi. Be that woman 20 years after. So she said, I mean, like, this is not even possible that God, the kind, merciful God, is really saying this to me. And if you doubt that he's in in the business of doing those sort of things, just remember Hannah. Don't forget her. She had been going to Shiloh every year. And God was basically saying, it's not your crying. I need you to come into a prophetic exchange. Until motivated by the Holy Spirit, she made the prayers that said, God, give me a son. I'll return him to you as a prophet. Then it's like, yes, you get it. So you would give me my prophet that must come from your womb because I ordained your womb for that assignment. And then I'll give your own five children. You know, so she wakes up. She's like, oh, my world. I could have come into that covenant partnership with God a long time ago. Your marriage is not dependent on a calendar season. It is dependent on a divine season. Divine seasons are called kairos. And kairos is facilitated by a set of spiritual processes that you must trigger by yourself. So back to Ineka. So she says, okay, this is not funny and I am not finding it funny. What do you mean? What do you have to say to me? And it says, I want you to give it blind focus. I want you to give it the type of focus that is laser, in, you know, an intensive and intense, where you are not thinking about anything else in your life at that season, and you are paying keen enough attention for you to hear me give you the instructions that will bring you into your marital, uh, your, your, you know, um, that will make you fruitful. So do you know what she did? First of all, um, her doctor had been saying to her that she needed to lose some weight. You know, but she would just fall in and out of that thing. She would start. She would, you know, Eba was not making her great. On and on and off. She was just not getting right. And she was um, having uh, weight-related sicknesses. She was quite big. So the Lord said to her, you are going to look at your life and you will take out the distractions. The things that are not making you give enough attention to, this, to receiving this promise. You take it out, you rummage through every page of scripture, and you are going to write out every promise of giving, generally in scripture about the fruit of the womb. And while you are in that process, I will give you your own scriptures. And you will start to take it like tablets. You have your morning capsule, capsule, your noon capsule, your evening capsule, your midnight capsule. And you are going to build an intensive devotion, a regimen around praying and receiving and giving thanks. And I will do it. So she looks at her life and she says, the, the, my major distraction is my work. It's not giving me time. It's not allowing me to devote myself the way I want to. And she quit her job. Did you hear me? And I'm not trying to say she quit your job. <laughs> But I'm trying to say this is a divine algorithm. You must impute a set of parameters into your life to extract what God has for you. And, you know, they didn't really teach us that way when we got into Sunday school, when we got born again. They really told us. Let me tell you what was sold to us. The value proposition sold to us by church is that the moment you get born again, your life gets fixed, isn't it? That you are going to have everything. Like you will never have to worry. You know, all you need will be supplied. And it's definitely better to be a Christian. But that's actually the opposite of the truth. Getting into a relationship with God, when you pass that early stage, the baby stage where it's still toasting you, you remember that time now, before you say, God, can I have credit? You just say, po, po, 750 from someone. (laughs) God, please, can you? Everything just goes that way. After that phase... Real life starts. And real life is that he will ground you before he lets you fly. He will stop you before he sends you. He will take away your alternatives, your your shortcuts. And, you know, he's going to prove you. He's going to test your character. He's going to prepare you. Amen. So she quits her job. And she sits with the scriptures. And that, is, that was her full-time job. Like she would sit with scriptures for hours. She looked at every woman in scripture that had um, some part of the Bible speak about her motherhood. 
and she would look at their lessons, study, pray with it. And I can't even go into all she did because I don't know all she did. It was her journey, but she shared a bit with us. And she started to extract promises and created a schedule for when she would take the confessions and she would give thanks about it and would do what the Lord put in her heart. And while she was on that journey, God told her a number of things to do. Okay, give this baby things. She had bought baby things many years when she traveled to the U.S. Expensive stuff that she kept looking like. And the Lord said, look, for every season comes a unique set of provisions. You should not even be keeping these things waiting for your children. When your children come, you have fresh stuff for them. There are women who need it today and who can't even afford it. I'm going to point you to them and you give every single thing away. And that's what she started doing. Guess what? While she's doing the spiritual, she also gets on this weight loss regimen. You know that her gynecologist had, pre- uh, had prescribed for her and started to you know, eat less, start to lose the weight. She said that she struggled to move from a 16 to a 14 in many months in the past, like months, 10 months over a year to see. She got on it with the type of devotion that he now required. And in the first three months, she moved from a 16 to a 12. By the time she came for the meeting, she must have been an 8 or a 10, isn't it? Who remembers when she came over? I mean, yeah, maybe a 10. Something that was impossible to do in the past. Do you see what I mean? But the bigger deal is she got pregnant in eight months. She wasn't pregnant for eight years. Did you hear me? And she had been having sex before. She had been predicting ovulation. She had been doing different styles. And she had been visiting a gynecologist. Sorry, darling. Do you see what I mean? Do you see what I mean? So she wrote a book, like a, a book that applies. In fact, we will try to bring the remaining copies we have. Because it applies to every part of life. It's just what it is. You must create a window of time in your life that is intensive, deliberate. You know, to, to, especially when that waiting season is deliberate from God. So let's even sort that first. It's even a myth breaker. If you are a Yoba person, you know what I want to say. You, you will understand it well. Do you know when they say alone, alone, shame? If you are not a Yoba person, it means that uh, the Lord is good. Uh, it's apologies. It means that he is the one doing you. God is the doer of you. Woman of God, thank you. Oh God, what a word. He is the doer of you. So, El doer, God my doer. Listen, it is a tested and trusted concept in God that he will get you where it will touch you. And if your back is against the wall because he's pushing you, one day he hopes you will look forward and look at him and be like, okay, what do you want? Then it's like, yeah. And when you say, what do you want on the matter of marriage? The first thing it tells you is not your man, it's your purpose. Because it finally got your attention. So you are talking, how many of you has it happened to? You are intensely, intensively praying about marriage, business, you know, and, and the Lord starts to say, yes, I've, I've ordained you as a prophet to the nations. They're like, maybe, maybe I wasn't explaining myself better in normal English that time. Let me pray in tongues. You pray in tongues some more, and it says, as I was saying, so on the matter of purpose, I will be sending you to Ikbetu Modu. You're like, hello, daddy, I'm not quite airing. The network is poor. Hey, so think about it and pay attention to it. And I know, based on the profile God showed me of the women coming, at least 70% of you here are unmarried because God is trying to get your attention in that area. And I know you know what I'm talking about because... For some of you, you are here and this is like going to be a completion of an ongoing season. So some of you know these things. It's literally God. For some women here, it's not that people aren't asking you out. But before they even finish what's on their mouth, the father is also speaking. That is not him. If you go that direction, you're on your own. You're like, so am I going to marry Jesus ultimately? What's all this? So if that is the truth, and it is the truth... That many times your waiting season is a divinely created gap in your life so that God can get your attention, shape your character, and prepare you for what he has prepared for you. If that is so, in that particular matter, and you need to listen to this, if God is the doer of you on something, 
except you agree to his algorithm, which we'll talk about, except you agree to his logic and his system of doing things and, and the procedure he wants you to follow on that matter, you can't experience his will in that matter. And I'm not saying if a woman is in a waiting season for marriage and does not follow God's algorithm, she will not get married. That's not what I'm saying. But she will not get married to his best for her. Do you see what I mean? Because there are men and there are things. So we want men of God. I've been married just a short while. And by the way, disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. I'm talking about the area of life I don't like talking about. So when I started and I said, God literally, I'm twisted me to do this. I really mean it. I'm talking about something I would rather not be talking about. I'm not a relationship coach because I will properly introduce myself. At least 60% of people in the room may be meeting me for the first time. I'm not a relationship coach. I'm not a marriage counselor. I don't like talking about marriage. Because it is the part of people's lives where they are most set in their ways. Because anything that touches your emotions very deeply, you form a preferred way of doing and thinking about it. Do you see what I mean? So... I'd rather not be doing this. It's marriage matter. But I know that under the atmosphere of the anointing that is going to be heavily present all through this program, there will not be women who listen to me and then who will still go ahead with the thing that they are emotionally involved with. Because they are things. And my ears are full. I've at least, uh, you know, had to help young ladies out of all kinds of dramatic things with relationships in the last 10 years. So I know there are things, there are puffs of nothingness. People without a sense of value at all for anything in their lives and who are carrying over the abuse that they faced. By the way, do you know men have been abused severely too? And they just carry it on. You know. And this is not about cell leader. That's why you've got to be married to your man of God. It's not about cell leader. It's not about HOD. It's not about associate pastor. It's not about the titles. It's really about what's in this person's spirit. What do they embody and what do they carry? So she waited eight years and she got pregnant in eight months. And in the course of four years, she had three children. And she's the one who is not like, God, I'm done. Or I beg. Let me now face my career. Isn't it interesting, you know, that you, you come into something you hungered for so desperately and you're now the one really literally striking a, 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 a whatever it's called, like a deal with God that these three were good. You know, I'm going to tie this thing forever. I'm done. That the triplets for the woman of God is just these triplets and she's good. Amen. So did you get that? That it's possible that God is the doer of you. El Dua, the Dua of you. This is so profound. I'm, I mean, we're going to patent that name to you. The Dua of you. So did you hear that? I said, whenever we want to break open into Kairos, which is not a, a calendar time, it's not chronological in nature, God isn't waiting for a certain time or a month so he's not saying, I won't do it until July. He's saying, I, you will trigger and bust open a season when you follow my algorithm. When you look at my procedure and my logic and you sign up for it. Okay? Okay? Did you hear that? And did you take that? And I think one of the most profound things we've, we've said, said to ourselves is that sometimes, or not sometimes, every believer would have a God-ordained waiting season that is created because God is trying to get your attention. Amen. And it will get you where you go pain body pass. So that when your back is finally against the wall, you've tried all your own strategies and you finally agree that, okay, I need you. I need you in this matter. You look up ultimately and say, okay, what do you want? And then he starts to speak to you. And that's what we're going to be triggering through the course in the name of Jesus. Amen. So yes, that's that. 
That's it. So don't forget Ineka's story. Don't forget it. Let it, let it stay with you. It's so powerful that I use it with ev- anything in my life and I keep seeing results. I see that I want to move this thing forward. My finances, parenting, my businesses, ministry, relationships, any type of thing. And, you know, I just intensify focus on that area. I'm like, okay, God, what do you have for me here? And as I start to pay attention, it's just like, it's the principle of nurturing, the principle of cultivation. The moment I put it together and I give it over to the Father and I begin to listen to what the Spirit has to say to me, I see results. I see God's type of results. Amen. So that's the introduction of introductions. Just something to sort of create uh, the right atmosphere, the right thinking around this. Amen. Okay. So that's it. So let us officially start. Let's welcome ourselves now. Find someone to welcome. Say, I'm really excited to see you. Okay. So um, at some point, we're going to get into uh, smaller groups and we will take it up from there. So, um, welcome. When we get into smaller groups, we're going to know ourselves by name and we're going to deepen, you know, uh, the sort of connection that will start to happen in our midst. So, my name is Debola Dejikurumi. I love to be called DDK. I love it so much because every time you say DDK, I remember that I'm married to Dejikurumi. Yes, because I owned my maiden name, Bola Deoye. Who knew me as Bola Dioye in OAU? Uh, or, 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 yeah, or in church, yeah. I own that name. You don't even call me Bola. Nobody calls me Bola. They say Bola Dioye. You know, it's Bola Dioye because I loved, I loved and I love my father. I think that he gave me the greatest legacy that any girl can have. And it's the legacy of I'm actually the best in the world. Like, my father did a twin thing in our minds. He taught us that no one is better than the other. That you're not better than anyone. And no one is better than you. And he also taught us that there's just that this version of me there is, is the best there could be. Oh, he did that. You know, it was so bad or good that if I came first and a guy came second when I was in primary or secondary school, my father would be angry. He's like, well, the girls in the class used to buy gifts for girls that came one to ten constantly in my schools. Well, the girls, how can a, a boy come so close? Do you know what a girl is? A girl is everything smart and much more. Yeah. I don't know, maybe met someone in the US because, I mean, he sold something to us. We really believed it. So this thing about, oh, girls are marginalized or they make them feel like second class citizen. I never experienced it until maybe second year in university. I, I never heard it before. I always thought that guys were disadvantaged. I'm telling you honestly. Then if, if you, you know that thing you do when you give someone 1,000 naira, or when you want to give four children 1,000 naira, how do you share it? You give a higher portion, isn't it, to the older. So maybe 400 to the older, 200 to the next. Then you share the remaining 400 with um, the remaining, maybe 150 and 100. Yeah, it will be about maybe 400, 200, 150, 150, 100. Something funny like that. You dare not do my father. Everybody got equal. My father will share it to the last five naira on top. It's like you did not get, there was nothing you did to come first or second or third. So the last bond will get what the first bond will get. And the funny thing is, we will even get extra. The girls will get extra. So I have an elder brother who constantly revolted like it's not fair. You know, when my dad travels and brings stuff, we will get double, constant. You know? So I think that it's a legacy that he gave me. I hope to give it to my children and much more. Um, And I hope that we all will do the same, you know, to look at the most important values that we want to embody and to pass that on to our children. So, but when I got married, I met this guy who became my father's rival until maybe two years into uh, the relationship. Did I now understand how to really place them where they were? So, dad is still first love, prophet, counselor, paddy, 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 but he moved from being best friend to being but DK is the best friend. So when you say DDK, you just remind me of how blessed I got um, being married to this person. So I hope that in the course of today or next class, I will get a chance to talk to you about what a uh, you know, relationship and all that, which is part of the reason I would rather not do this. 
because these are maybe the most treasured private parts of my life. But I'm happy to share because the very same algorithm that this program is grounded on is the same thing that produced that relationship, that brought him to my life, produced that relationship, and led us to marriage. Um, and I feel like we have a very good thing going. Um, we've married for just over six years, so I'm very young. I'm very young. I quite feel unqualified for this. But you see, the wisdom of God has nothing to do with age. It's timeless. It's believable. It works, produces results all 100% of the time. So married for six years to Deji Kurumi, who, by the way, is he's too fine. Like, I don't even know how to get that fine in life. And you know, when, you, when you're looking forward to being married to a man of God, you sort of, you are told, well, in my own, where I was raised as a believer, you are told to forget about looks, to just focus on the hina. Because God look on the hina and not on the outward. So I just like, it's fine, Lord, I submit to your will. But I just remembering all the fine guys who have asked you out are like, tobacco is fine, but it's fine. If you can't do that, it's still okay too. I'll, I'll just focus, <laughs> you know. And then I get this very good deal that, I mean, also covers that part. Ah, I find him very attractive. Every, I'm, I'm not kidding, like very attractive. And we have this fire that is constantly in between both of us. You know, we can almost touch it sometimes. Yeah. And I shall say no more. <laughs> so, yes, for the sake of a program and, I mean, for friendship, call me DDK. I run um, a, a coaching business for women. It's called Immerse Coaching Company. And I hope that, you know, by the time uh, we, we get closer to when we're opening our courses for the year, you can also sign up because it does something that is very great for the preparation that you're making. How many of you are alumni of Immerse? Fantastic. Okay. Um, so, yes, I run that. Uh, it's a personal transformation boot camp with a number of courses. We've been around for uh, um, over three years. We've graduated over 2,600 women in nine countries. Um, and we have a number of programs in the suit. We're introducing four more. It looks like an amazing year already. I also run Ideation Hub Africa. It's an accelerator for social innovators, NGO leaders, and people who play in the development space. Um, the goal ultimately is to begin to consult for governments in, on the African continent, you know, in the areas of public policy, sustainability, and how to solve social problems. And then I'm also a leader at Deborah Initiative for Women, which is my heartbeat. Uh, it is my heartbeat. DIWs are the heart of what I believe in, what I love to do. And we've, we've been together for seven years plus, And, I mean, we just keep growing stronger in the name of Jesus. I am... An unashamed, unabashed believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is my highest desire. He's my ultimate longing. He's my greatest pursuit. He's my deepest passion. Every single day in my life, I look forward to what the Lord has to say to me, what he's asking of me. And I want my relationship with him to be fresh, real, every day. So I am a born-again Christian, I am spirit-filled, and I'm living my life in a way that can count for eternity. And everything that we're going to do in the Supernatural Marriage Cause is deeply spiritual, unashamedly spiritual. There's going to be a lot of scriptures, a lot of praying in the spirit, a lot of, you know, declarations, confessions, a lot of adjustments in the way we think, in the way we relate, in the way we do things, and there will be application. So at the end of the program, for sure, this cause will take you closer to God in the name of Jesus Christ. And, you know, if you're not born again, you will become born again, and you would grow in the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, yes, um, married to Deji Kurumi, he is um, we pastor the baptizing church, Lekki, where we're currently using. They're, they've been so gracious to me. So let me use it um, for the meeting. And he's a, he's a business consultant, runs his own consulting business. Uh, we have three, three great children together, two daughters and a son. Um, I think that my first daughter is just mini me, not just in how she looks, although she's finer, she's far finer, but also in everything about what comes out of her. She's a negotiator. 
What was she still asking for today? You were there. <laughs> She's a negotiator. I mean, she would negotiate anything. She's a natural leader, has one natural leader in school since reception one, when she was one and a half years old. I don't know what they were thinking when they were awarding her that at that time. So she's just constantly blowing our minds with, I mean, I thank God for all of them. And uh, my vision is also to hand something of value down to them, you know, as a righteous person on the earth. Okay, so that's about me. Um, I'm with you for the next eight weeks, and I'll tell you why it's eight weeks. And um, I will be facilitating the heart of the program, but I have a number of my friends who will be joining me for short seminar sessions. Okay, and I also have uh, a number of my friends whose resources and materials we're going to be using all through the um, program. Okay. All through the program, uh, some would be physically present, watch some of their videos, would read some of their materials, listen to some of their tapes or uh, uh, audio messages, and we're just going to have a generally robust experience together. Okay? So, um, So this uh, first session is just basically introduction, okay? And um, hopefully we'll be out of here by 4 p.m., you know, but going forward, it will run from 2 to 4.30. It will start at 2, exactly. So I'm already providing you. It's really good to see you, Hevziba. Well done. Well done. I, I was very glad to share yesterday with you. Okay, so the only reason I'm climbing this is not because I'm a pastor, it's because um, I will be able to see, you will be able to see me better, isn't it? And I can read from here, you know, without having to hold it. So, um, well, an introduction. Today is just introduction. And um, I will run you through what, what we'll be looking at. Deb, please help me pass that. And we can be out of here by about four o'clock. Okay, so first things first. The program will run from 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. If you are not in by 2.15 and you had not spoken to the person who will be your team lead in your own smaller group that will be created today, you will not actually be allowed to step in. If you're not in by 2.15... And we don't have a word informing your team leader ahead and granting you permission, you will not be in by 2.15. If you step at the door, you will not be allowed to get in. So I know that um, maybe after today, some people will not even bother trying to join because it will annoy you. I already annoyed. And some people are already like, hello, hello, little exactly my point so I am not devoting the seven weeks and the time I'm devoting is not when I turn up here it's every single day that I'm going to be praying for you I'm praying about the heart of the father I'm putting together the curriculum and offering you the counsel that God puts in my heart so that you can get into your season and you can come into the inheritance that God has reserved for you. I'm not putting those days together, which would be at least approximately some 56 days of my life for anyone to kid around. So I started ministry in year 2003, 2003. So that has been 14 years plus. In 14 years of doing ministry, if there's anything I've found, which I hope will change, People don't know how to commit to anything. Then when it's free, it's worse. You think you just stroll in, stroll out. Yeah, let's see, let's see. You know, so there's already that. And there's also what is called the herd mentality. Someone is here because a friend said, okay, let's go and see what's happening. So by the time we're done with today... And we spend the coming week together. You're filling assessment forms. You're asking yourself some questions. And you're, send, you're crafting your vision for marriage. And th- your man of God. And you're sending it back to me. Some people I expect will drop off along the line. Because it's now getting too serious. 
And you're saying, I won't marry, but no be jammed. And it's fine. I'm just saying that this is for hardcore commitment. This is for serious discipline. This is for devotion. This is something that will impact not just on you getting married, but on the sort of woman you become and how you can even rise to be counted in your generation with a divine assignment. So I feel like this is even God's undercover mission to get our attention and to say to us some things he's been meaning to say, but we might not have heard if we were not hungry for our men of God. Do you see what I mean? So if you're not here at 2.15, just turn back. Just turn back. And I'm the man for the job. I'm sure God thought about the person who is not the stereotypical pastor's wife for the work. And he just thought, who is, who is the babe that, you know, can just handle? No, mother, my try it. And I'm the man for the job. I'm not going to look at your face. I hope that we'll stick together and have fun, but I didn't come to play. And I hope that we're going to create room in our lives, you know, for a flow of the Holy Ghost in a way that moves us into the harvest that he has prepared for us. So, 2.15 at the latest, we're seated. If we won't be able to be present, we'll speak to our team leader, who moves it on to the course admin, who, by the way, is Deborah Ige, whom you might have been interacting with. That's Deborah. Let's see you now. Deborah. So, that's Deborah. She's getting married very soon. And we're looking forward to it. Amen. Um, so, yes, we're together for eight weeks. It was seven weeks, but a new situation has come up that moves it by one week. And that's the fact that we're not physically meeting next Sunday. So, not next Sunday. After this Sunday, we meet the Sunday after the next. Amen? Of course, you would. That's what 20th. 28th, exactly. We meet on 28th. And then we roll on till the first Sunday in March by the grace of God. So, of course, on the group, you would continue to get, uh, you know, what will happen in the course of the weeks or in the course of the two weeks um, until we're meeting again. So, 2 to 4.30 in the name of Jesus. We have a grace of what time? 2.15. Okay. Um, the, the, uh, the academia, the, the core content will be delivered to you weekly and would also be shared on the group or by email. Okay? So the material for every week will be provided at the start of that week. And then we will work with it and prepare with it and, um, you know, trust God for the type of results we see with those things that start to change our thinking and prepare us. We would pray on the group um, every Tuesday. We we'll pray on the group every Tuesday, and um, sometimes scriptures might have been sent to you ahead to help you meditate in preparation for the prayer meeting, okay? You would have a small group of about 10 women, and we're going to be breaking into those groups today. Your small group is going to be like your powerhouse, your small group will consist of your own accountability partners who look out for you, um, who pray with you. So I imagine that you would fix your own prayer times or your own meeting times from today. And more importantly, with whom you would review the recommended text for the cause. What, it's called While Waiting by Fikayo uh, Deinka. I hope I got it. Is it Fikayo or Fikayo? Fikayo. I got it. Great. By Fikaya. She's also going to join us. Um, a beloved sister whom God has brought into my life. Yeah, so we will receive the, the, uh, the book from next Sunday. Actually, by next Sunday, not from, because by next Sunday, you need to start to read it. Okay? It goes for 1500 and um, you'll be able to buy it. I think there will also be an e-version. So for those who are more into, you know, their tabs and their iPads, you know, for reading, you would also be able to pick it on Okada Books. We have the online course version running concurrently. So for, for, for those people who would be in the online school, 
they will use the e version. So this is the point where I say, if or if uh, you know you find as we are already in class right now that you might not be able to be present physically, you can now sign up for the online course. Okay. So before you leave, you just have your name written down with Deborah. Um, no, better send an email so we can reply that email. So just send an email to, um, to my email address and we will be able to migrate you to the online program that will have its own WhatsApp group, okay? How many people did that liberate? Some people won't be able to physically present. Cool. So you'll be able to join the online group. I mean, the Holy Spirit just made, made me know that I could do that and showed me how to work it out. So I'm very excited for women who will be able to come. And um, for your friends who were interested but could not commit physical presence. But like you know, those who be physically present, I mean, let me, I mean, let me just speak in favor of physical presence. Because I know that it'll, it won't be more powerful, but it will be easier for you to get into your flow than if you were away and you were online. Do you see what I mean? If you're online, it will require greater devotion, greater discipline, and you would have to sustain your own energy personally. You'd have to keep your follow-through personally because you're not physically present. But when you turn up on Sunday, you feel like I'm connected to this thing. Do you see what I mean? And you run through your week on that energy. So if you can make it, if you can make room in your life for it, it will be an absolute pleasure, you know, to have you present, Okay. So, um, after today, by t- this evening or tomorrow, you would receive the document containing your curriculum for the program. Um, we'll meet to pray on Tuesdays, and all through the week, we'll send you uh, different resources that you can work with. In your own small group, it'll be nice to have a time where you meet for review, and that is where you also sort of discuss um, if a person is going to be late. They won't talk about it. If a person were, wasn't present, they won't talk about it. Now, what I plan to do, really, is to say if you don't make um, a session from the fourth week, you can't join in the session after. So if you don't come for the fourth class, we won't be able to continue with you. If you don't come for the fifth class, we won't be able to continue with you. Do you see what I mean? So from the fourth class, we will not be able to continue because there are things that happen, you know, when you are present, which is what I'd really love to see. But there's just something in my heart that has not fully, um, I don't have full approval for that thing that I want to do. So I'll confirm to you next time we see if that's how it's going to rock. Do you see what I mean? That will just be class two and then I'll just confirm that to you. So the curriculum provided to you tomorrow, I've spoken about um, the book we're using for the course, which will be available from the next class, which is the 28th. Please come. I've got seats for you, women of God. I even like the way I'm just taking your steps, you know, coming forward like the bride. Good to see you. Okay. So, I mean, um, in another maybe 30 minutes, we're going to get into groups. So, let me run you through what the curriculum looks like, and then we will provide you the document, okay, um, to, your, to, your, to you on the group. So, we're on introductions today. Um, in the course of the week, maybe also tomorrow when I receive the curriculum, we will be provi- I will provide you an assessment that is just meant to sort of start to create uh, a preparation in your mind, you know, about the season that is opening up for you. And the assessment will also help you ask some important questions uh, as to your mindset with the matter of relationship, if you have fully come to closure with any hurts that you have faced, if there are issues with identity, so that by the time I review your, your response to me, which is like your major personal, uh, personal profiling to me, I would recommend materials or books um, that can help you close the gap quickly in that particular area, okay? So that's, that's the first thing that happens um, on class one. We have our introductions, which is going on, and then we go on to the assessment, which will be sent to you. 
um, and will come alongside your first confession material so that you can start to declare God's word. In class two, we're going to look at God's plan for marriage. And we're also going to be asking ourselves, what sort of examples have we seen and how did those things impact on um, our expectation for a godly marriage? So that's the point where we are we're looking at God's plan for marriage. What does God consider a great union? And what is his purpose for bringing a man and a woman together? How do those dynamics work? Your assignment will be crafting your vision for marriage, which you would come to, come to class three with. Okay, so we'll have that alongside Pastor Vincent Arifalo, um, who is senior pastor at Dominion House. Okay, in class three, we're going to look at the art of waiting. So that's what we're going to be uncovering God's procedure, God's thinking, and God's ideal for waiting right. Do you see what I mean? While I am preparing and um, sowing the right seeds to cultivate a harvest and to trigger a new season in my life. So your waiting season is the transition between where you are now and where God wants you to be, isn't it? Amen. And what you do in your amen. Okay, so you guys are really looking serious. Why now? Why are you looking so serious? Because it's a serious tub. Because it's quite serious. Okay. Some people are still not smiling. They're just like, what's, what's really funny? Just go on. I didn't come here to play. <laughs> okay. So, yes. Um, so, if your waiting season is the transition phase between where you are today and where the Lord wants you to be. And we've said that where the Lord wants you to be is not a season that opens up at a particular time. Meaning that it's not exactly saying for the most part. For a percentage, maybe about 5 10%, God actually has a chronology in mind. And those are things we'll also see, which are possibilities. So for some people, we do everything we do to get in line, and God still says, you and I, but it's not so for about 80%. Okay? So that is uh, the bit of the, you know... Um, a balance that we'll st- sort of see when we go into the course. But so on by class three, we're looking at the art of waiting. So what is God's wisdom for transiting into a divine season? What things must I do? And that's where we sort of see that it's a myth to think that your waiting season is a passive time of your life where there is not much required of you. God will do what he will do. I'm, I'm just, you know, trusting him and I'm declaring, look, this is my year. This is my year, you know. And God is saying that, look, there's a lot more to happen beyond passively waiting. So what are the things that must happen actively in that waiting season? And how do you know if you are in a waiting season or you are basically just occupying space and time is passing by? Because, so the point is, the fact that you're unmarried and want to be married doesn't mean you are in a waiting season. Did you hear that? I mean, and I bet you thought you were waiting, isn't it? I'm waiting for the right man who, you know, I'm not going to hurry. Nobody can put me under pressure. I am waiting. And God is saying, oh, where? You are not waiting, no. You are a passerby. But there will be no more passerbys or passersby. So, um... The art of waiting is where we sort of really now see what is the requirement to start to move in transition and trigger your divine season. Okay. Um, Yes, so that's that. How do I understand seasons? How do I unlock prophecies? And how do I start to voice the intentions of God? It's also in your waiting season that you must receive the blueprint, the template, and the roadmap. Just what I mean. That's what makes it a waiting season. So second thing is there is no waiting season except there is a word from God you are standing on. Do you see what I mean? And the word from God is twofold. There's a word from scripture and there's a word from the spirit. Amen. So you need both the logos and the rema. And I promise you God is more interested to speak to you 
than you want to hear. He really wants to speak to you. So by the time we now uncover the wisdom for the waiting season, which, are you still shy that you don't want to sit in front? This thing you've been doing in church since. I've never met her, but I could just tell. She was like, oh my God, I don't want to do this. But you sit in front on your wedding day. So who will come and sit in front? And that day, everyone is really looking at you. By the way, do you know they don't want us, that not everybody in the audience on your wedding day is smiling at you. I always thought it was so that everybody was just like, oh. on that day, there are actually some who are looking at you like, you know what? No. <laughs> One of the things you would have to master as a woman on purpose with a clear assignment for destiny is waiting a call bone face. It is the balance of a tender heart and a tough and a thick skin. I'm telling you, because there is just a lot of negative vibe in the world. Oh, you must be your own woman. Your groove with Jesus. So that's the art of waiting. So you just need to have your groove so tight with the Lord Jesus Christ that you are cool with you. It's not that you're perfect, but you see, the moment you're listening to the Holy Spirit instruct you about what's not great in your life, that's good enough voice. Isn't that so? That's good enough feedback. So the moment I take that feedback the Holy Spirit's giving me and I start to work with it, I don't have to be perfect in your opinion. And I don't, you know, I don't, everyone doesn't have to even like you. So we must be healed. And that's one of the things that will happen with this program. You've got to be healed of this approval tendency and this desire to be liked by everyone and to be seen as good enough and all that is, is fine. Even Jesus wasn't liked by everyone. And he's my mentor. He's my role model. So, I mean, if everyone is even like him, I should be worried. Like, please don't like me. Please, please. I want to be like Jesus. <laughs> Amen. So that's the art of waiting. Um, how can I come into a waiting season? When I'm, I'm, how can I distill the roadmap, the template in the heart of God? So that when I see him, I will know him. Okay, so the art of waiting, I'll be in class with Fikayo Adeyinka. Um, class four will go to discerning your man of God. And we will literally start with to, how to even profile a man of God. Okay, what are things I will see to discern that this person is of God? And scripture provides us a template for those whom the father calls his son. And the goal is to be married to his son. And by the time we see those templates, we're also able to separate between nice-to-haves and must-haves. Yeah. I mean, the nice-to-haves, yeah, it won't be bad. And what you find is when you fix your gaze on the must-haves, the nice-to-haves are mostly things that can be imbibed as we go along. But I also agree that your nice-to-haves could be things that may not be able to be imbibed, e.g. his height. You know why you're just like, God, I can't take anything, but not a short man, I beg you. <laughs> and some of you are going to actually get on this consecration journey with God, where... And I taught an entire message, which is also one of the uh, resources for the program. It's in your curriculum. Where it is possible that God didn't want you to marry a certain man at a certain season in your life. He just wanted you to want to marry him. Yeah. <laughs> it is possible so I've not even gotten to that class, but let me quickly just share it because it will heal a number of people. Two things could be happening when you heard from God about a person. Two things could be happening. One, the Lord could be breaking a stereotype within you, a stronghold within you. And he did not anyway really want you to marry that man, but he wanted you to want to marry him. So, the moment you now finally come to the place of submission, after initially struggling, you're like, okay, God, I'm really ready. It's like, yes, submission, consecration, that's what I wanted to achieve. I wanted to just bring you to a place when I make a choice for you, you say, yes, sir. So, when you now say, yes, sir, it's like, that test is passed. Oh, yeah, be going. That's not your wife. 
So it's possible you heard about a person and it didn't work out. You were not crazy. Yes. That's fine. Yes. 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 And I will show you scripturally. Another thing could be happening. God could be putting before your face a spiritual prototype of the man he has for you. Because there is not one man for you, there is a type of spirit for you. Listen, I look back at a number of people who asked me out, and I know at least two other guys I could have been married to. Because of how they are wired. Because it is, you, you should be looking out for a certain type of wiring that would give you room for the woman you will become. Do you see what I mean? That's why you can't choose a man based on how he looks and where you are today. That's why you must lean on God because he knows where you are going and how robust that man would have room in his spirit in the years ahead to accommodate you. So the Lord could have just been putting a spiritual prototype before your eyes. And he wanted you to study that prototype. Learn how to adapt to that prototype. Learn to pray for that prototype. Do you understand? Learn to respect, to love, and honor that prototype. But the moment you get the curriculum, it's like, oh yeah, my Lord, that's not your wife. And uh, for, the, for the most part, many of us don't know how to wait with a word without getting emotionally involved. So we would have gotten emotionally involved, and that's where quarter starts. We now get angry at God. Because you were already signing your signature with the guy's son name. Like but, Williams. Why are you, you think I don't know? I signed Kurumi before he asked me out. I knew he was my husband four to six months before he showed up. I mean, yeah. And I would go to Facebook every day and be checking him out. And I mean, I was worried. I'm like, God, you have a sense of humor. All I see on this guy's Facebook page is Manchester and Chelsea. I'm like, woman of destiny with a great destiny. These things have been talking <laughs> Like, I was basically trying to remind God that, in case you're a bit forgot of the things you spoke to me, I can't really say this guy. Nothing. He will wear fitted shirt and jeans. And you'll be snapping himself. I'm like, this guy's self-conscious. Like, Manchester were killing it today. I'm like, ah. Because ideally, it should be, it should be a, a redeemed pastor, a uh, man in an assignment in Port Harcourt, an author of four books. You know, with different postures of his ministration, ministering, pastor. You know, just like, yeah, oh my God, come now, I'm waiting. He didn't look at all. He didn't sound like it. No, he didn't retweet or repost any spiritual hand in Everly. I'm like, but does this guy not even have a church that I can say we're invited to? Nothing. I was very worried. And it still messes up with my paradigm constantly. We got married, I knelt down like, I submit to you. You are my father. You are my priest. I said, Dide, Dide, I'm not your father. Your father is an Amuwu. I'm like, I, uh, I still ask myself, I'm like, show me one, one chance. But what, they, is this my husband? Stand, your father is an Amuwu. Stand up. I have ministrations. I'm like, you will take me along. Abby, you will drive me down when we had just a car. And you wear short nicker. And fitted shirts, fitted t-shirts, and short nick and tennis. Jamalo, patting is. I'm like, did I have administration? Even if you will not come in, when you come down and you you know people will like the woman's of the woman of God's husband, and it's like first things first. You are not a woman of God. You are a ministry gift. You don't need any stereotypes. Maybe you too, you want to wear jeans and tennis. Deliver words in your spirit and go. Then number two, I'm not going to come down. I came to drop. I'm like, it's not funny. You're clapping. You're clapping. God will set you up like that. I'm telling you. Constantly. I brought you you. You are my focus. I'm not out for the glitterati. You know, normally what you expect is the pastor man in Paracourt, then he comes out to like, bless you. They're like, bless you, sir. The hand of the Lord is upon you. <laughs> not him. We still went to Ibadan to pray in UI. Just this Christmas, like 28th or 29th, the moment I came down, there were a number of UI students praying, and they started to 
actually run toward me. Oh, ma, I'm digging. So I'm, I'm doing like, I don't know you. I follow you, ma, on Instagram. I'm reading Fiber on We're using your book to pray. My husband kept walking forward. I'm jogging. I'm like, I'm come, I'm come. We prayed. He was even teasing me. <laughs> Celeb. Beleo. I'm like, no, no. We are coming back, entering into the car driving. We just saw this crowd running after our car. I'm like, ah, you said, they don't know us. Well, it can't be us. I'm like, they're really waving up. Then the car stops. And a guy comes to my husband and says, um, sir, we know you. Uh, we are in, mention the fellowship that our pastor runs in UI. So clearly they've come to camp meeting and seen him. We worship at so and so. Uh, and sir, we just would like you to pray for us. Typical response would be, let us pray. Father Lord, my husband says, why? You're already here to pray. He says, did you tell me you came to pray? He said, we've been praying since 7 a.m. here. He says, so why should I pray for you? I'm like, pray for them. <laughs> okay, um, still looking shocked and confused. <sighs> okay, let's, let's pray. He finishes and says, pray for us. I'm like, <laughs> like you two, you must pray. Whatever it made you tell me to pray. But when it comes to the counsel I need to be grounded, I'm telling you, the freedom I need to fly, absolutely. The patience for my coin is going, absolutely. I'm the one that triggers a fight and my husband says, Magic Aja, I'm sorry about everything. I'm just sorry. <laughs> but point is, you go your way. One week after, it's like, let us talk. Um, that thing you pulled up, that, that was not wise. Now, let me tell you why it's not wise. You're like, you apologize. <laughs> <Did you? laughs> so, fantastic balance. Extremely secure. Doesn't see Didi cases. A little girl God has put in his care to care for. Absolutely. <laughs> Telling you. So, did you hear that? No, not this gist. You people like gist too much. The other one I was hearing. Do you hear it clearly? He could just have wanted you to want it. Yeah? He could have been putting a spiritual prototype. So because he has housed the spirit of Abraham, a man like Abraham, in this Felix guy, he brings you together. He starts to say, pray for Felix. You're spending hours praying. He starts to say, do you know Felix is called to do this and this? That the Lord told you to pray for a guy and downloaded his spiritual calling and future to you doesn't make him your husband. But they didn't tell us. The man to start praying. You already seen yourself in wedding gown with him. Hey, and the Lord is saying, And then there are actually times you believe. Because the, 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 the direction from the Lord to this person is so intense. It captures your heart. And you, are, you have this conviction that is your husband. It's not a problem for God and you. You see, God trusts you more than you trust him. He trusts you enough that he can hand to you a thing that can be fatally damaging, but he, will, he knows you will come back home. God has a lot of trust in the love in your heart for him. You don't get. And it's not that you are a chess. You, it's not that you're a pawn in his hands or he's trying to do chess with your life. He's doing a work in you. So when he brings the next Abraham that is your Abraham with the name on it, you've logged in your assignment in the spirit. He will fast track things. Then number three... It is possible you heard expressly about your man of God and he did not hear. So what will you do now? Will you linger Joseph? Pass your test. The, you know, um, uh, what's, what's that thing the Lord said to me many, many, many years ago? And I started to hear it after a while. I'm like, fantastic. God has said to other people too. He said you would not reap where you sow, but what you sow. So it's fine. You invested genuine friendship, prayer time, a lot of intercession, gifts, which by the way, we advise you not to do anymore. <laughs> Don't give gifts. Don't buy buns and asu and coke tea for your HOD. Don't do any of those. You have a word literally. Look, by the time you have a word, that's the perfect time to pretend as if you are invincible to the guy. Invisible. 
Because it's even an outflow of faith that I trust the word enough for it to perform without my intervention. You are not hanging around after service like... <laughs> His pen falls down. Yours. No need at all. Come to church. Don't try to sit around him. They've taught us strategic positioning is not scriptural. Until you hear. When you hear, then position. Until you hear, don't do anything. Just mind your business. Go your way. He's even trying to get your number. You're like, why? You've not seen how Elijah was behaving to Elisha. Get back. I let the pursuit be powerful. But when you hear a line, and you can hear, my son will speak to you today. You say yes today. That was my case. Embarrassing situation. Because my mentors have taught me you wait like six months. You do a lot of ch- The guy will be crying, holding your leg, calling your friendships, talking to your mother. She's so like, I can die here. You know, I can catch a grenade for you. Yeah, I mean, you're just like, I know, like I was born for this moment. Yeah. I'm in the cab going to see him at Hozun Cinema to watch movie. And he says, today is the day. And he says, you will cut short his process. You say yes today. I'm like, but you know it's embarrassing, God. <laughs> we watched the movie. My heart is in my mouth. Because let me be honest, I was already jailing. It's just God that have mercy on me. <laughs> Fantastic human being. <laughs> so maybe not jailing, jailing, but I really, I really thought it was a great person. So I get there and we watch the movie. I could not, of course, I could not see the movie, as you might imagine. <laughs> I'm just like, can this movie be over? We we'll finish movie now, so you want to watch our, eat shower my game. I'm like, my dear, ah, well, ah. <laughs> say that with the Lord has put in your heart. You know. I know you are waiting for the rest of the story, <laughs> but we have moved. You people like story, oh. <laughs> you people like gist, and you know, all my facilitators are actually coming to share. Because there's a lot of wisdom in our stories. There's a lot of wisdom. So that's the third, um, the fourth uh, session, how to discern a man of God and how to discern your man of God. So we're going to look at scriptural profiling for the type of man that is worthy to be joined to a woman of God. Do you see what I mean? So those things will now shape your value system. Those things will now become foundational expectations that you have as to the type of man that, you know, can get your attention. And it can even be a powerful sieve instantly. First conversation, first hangout, you can already see you're like, no, no. Prodigy of mine, you know, um, Believed, and you should listen to this. Believed she had a word um, about a man of God in her church. A very fantastic human being. I'd even written a book. I mean, how better does it get? He's good looking, dark tall and handsome with a dimple. You know, and well shaved eyebrow. You know those naturally nice ones? So I just like, God, this is all of heaven. It's my hobby to like him. And the Lord had spoken to her. Thank you. You know, and can I be honest with you? I had a witness about it even before she spoke to me. Yes. I'd gone to um, speak at their fellowship. I saw him and it came strongly to my heart that the Lord had his eyes on him to join him to her. She had not become my prodigy at that time. But I saw both of them. Do you see what I mean? I left, she came after me, oh, that was such a great time, uh, blah, blah, I'd like you to mentor me, and we started to get close, and she said to me, like, four months after, that I just want to be accountable, especially if I'm wrong, and this thing doesn't make sense, but I feel like this particular person keeps coming to my heart, and I've just been discarding it, and praying, and all that, and um, the Lord started to speak to me, you know, about him, that he was the person he had pre, um, was reserving me for that sort of thing and was talking to me about the things he wanted us to do together. And by the way, that is a great thing. 
And that is something I desire and I will pray a lot about for every of you. You have to experience it. Even though we'll teach about peace, you know, under this topic when we're looking at how can I hear God, you know, and we're going to read a few materials on hearing God because it's an important part of the algorithm. You can't, you can't go forward if you're not hearing. You need to know who is speaking to you. You know, but beyond peace, it would be nice to hear. It would be nice to receive scriptures, adding to scriptures, painting a picture. Isn't that a powerful thing? How many of you simply just are so thankful you can hear God help you make your decisions? It is a treasure in life. So she heard that. She heard that and that's great. And she said it to me and I didn't encourage her. I just basically said, you know, let us continue. Um, thank you, you know, um, okay, keep praying. Don't say it to him. Don't say it to anyone. You said it to me. We're praying together. Don't buy him bonds. Don't buy him asshole. No diet coke. No hanging around after service. No trying to be nice. No chatting up abruptly. Mind your business. A month or two after, her pastor put her in the same team with that person so that it could work on a certain project, maybe a magazine project, I think. And, you know, they were getting sort of close, but nothing just basically getting job done, getting to know each other. Um, like two months after, pastor calls and says, what do you think about brother Swansu? The man she told me, I was like, like I was at the edge of my chair. What did you say? Because that is the moment things mess up for a number of sisters. They're just like, God has been telling me my husband and I've been praying for hate money. <laughs> That's where everything just dabaroos. Because you just like for the, for the pastor to ask me. Smells all deep gone. Now, there is a deep stuff. Sorry, I'm working on myself this year. Um, my DIW women are just disappointed and tired because I should be representing them well here. But the Lord is working on me. <laughs> He's working on me since what? 1900. <laughs> Amen. So he calls and she says, oh, he's, he's a great brother. And she quickly deflected and said, on the project, um, he responds to his meals early. He re his reporting style is fantastic. I like the fact that he was able to quickly, I said, calm down. <laughs> She's like, sir, calm down. I mean, I don't understand, sir. You've not, like, you don't think the Lord might be. And she said, sir, that question is not for me, do you think? Shouldn't it be for him? And he immediately says, I've spoken to him, he likes you. So I'm just trying to say that you should, do you understand? Be available. And... <laughs> Pastor, I don't know why I say, no, what do you mean? Just, do you understand? I create an atmosphere of readiness and all. That just position, positioning. Just let him see you, that sort of thing. He says, okay, sir, I don't know what I'm saying. Says that to me, I'm like, fantastic. Test passed, good girl. Okay? Listen to this. So, um, this was about August. October, I was in camp, redemption camp. And the Lord said to me, his presbytery, another will take. I'm like, what? Said to me, you see, this is office that I gave to him. To be the custodian and to nourish and, and treasure this heart of my daughter. I'm taking it from him. So, I'm like, okay. I pray in tongues and I'm sort of asking, should I tell her? And he says, no, I'm going to fix it. They are getting closer, getting closer. She's reporting to me like, okay. He said a few things that sounded like when someone likes someone. I said, don't bulge. Don't, you need to be properly invited into a courtship. It's not you. I'm, I'm feeling you. You're feeling that what? That you like Momo and I like Akara. What? <laughs> that night when my husband started to talk and he was like, I have never done this in my adult life. I don't even know how to say it. I keep a stress. It's like, even this, your face is terrifying me. Yep, let it terrify you. If you want to invite me on a destiny journey, you must be able to say it. I'm not bored. I'm not helping you. I'm just staring. <sighs> Chill out. Now, why are you looking? I'm like, I, can you say what you want to say? Why are you so nervous? What happened? Um, I think you're a remarkable woman. In my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, there are many remarkable women. You must go forward. So that's what happened that I'm remarkable. I've been remarkable since campus. You didn't get it. Remarkable ever since. To the end that what? Up 
until the end. You must say it. Because we've also had a situation where bro- Uncle Felix will say he, we, we never asked each other out. Uh-uh. Relationship, one and a half years. You will now say, when I have introduction, it's like, we're just close friends. I love you like a sister. It's just God that has restrained some of us. Because some people that strangulated people, <laughs> if not for the love of God. So he says that to me. I'm calm. She keeps reporting. They're getting closer. And she says to me that he says he would like them to go out. That is something he wants to say to her. You know, and that, did it, this sound, it looks like this person wants to ask me into a relationship. You know, sent me screenshots of a number of their gist. Yes, by the way, I'm like that. I am FBI, CIA, yes. And I'm happy to walk that journey with you, screenshots, at Jack Agbonko, to we. The way is, yes. Because isolation and secrecy has brought us to where we are. Yes. Went to minister in Abuja. She blocks me. Ma, it's because I've not seen you physically, I would have just told you. How you meet my fiance? Brings him. The same guy that is thirsting somebody in my life at that moment. I'm like, are you not? The guy's just rubbing his hands. He's like, yam. Oh, mama will be all in here. The moment they start to look like a thief, they have stolen something. Currently asking out a babe. And he was paying to son in Abuja. Look, I'm not talking meals and booms I read though. I'm talking things I've seen. So this secrecy, don't tell anyone we will have a private introduction. We move on to get married. We have a honeymoon in Seychelles. Let us tell them. Let's tell them. Don't put it on Facebook or Instagram. Let's keep it private. We know what God is doing with us. Let me tell my parents. Tell my pastor. Tell my mentor. Tell my close friend. It's just going to be us. It can't be us. Aledali Ayeshe. AKA, we cannot do the world alone. <laughs> So back to her, sends me the screenshots, saw all this gist, and they go on this date, and he asked her out, and she said, okay, um, I clearly like you too, I think we have a great friendship, let me just talk to my leader about it, let me pray about it, Um, you know, which was the only interjection to my story, to give you the full gist of it. So those were my lines. And I'm sure she picked my lines. Because I basically said, I definitely really like you. I think you're a great person to your remarkable. And I mean, this sounds very interesting. And I can't even pretend I didn't see it coming. But I definitely have to talk to Pastor Shegun. And I mean, um, I'll give you feedback. Of course, back end, we were already literally just, what was, oh yeah, quick, quick, quick. quick. So the man I got that side sorted, I'm back that very night with a poem that is still has till today. Like life, you know when you have been, you have been gated for many years, it's not him, it's not him. And there's this flood of love on your inside. The moment I knew I'm doing it, that poem, I should read it out to you. But like that, I poured all my love on him. And I said, in case you were not even thinking of getting married, you're like stuck, we're getting married. That was so getting married. <laughs> of course, he said that that night, I'm looking to be married to you end of next year, which is another thing you should be ready for. You should be ready for speed. Say, I'm ready for speed. I'm ready for speed. I mean, you are, not, you are not 25 or 33 to be doing four-year marriage, four-year courtship. That what happened. Sure, is it makeup? Because I'm not that young. <laughs> the, uh, not, 2029. <laughs> My children is already in secondary school then. You don't get. Amen. So that's what she said to him. So they had a great time. She knew in her heart, oh, she was so excited, clearly. So he drops her at home. Listen, drops her at home. And as they stood back in their house by the car, he says to her that he finds her so attractive. And she said she was already thinking, okay, this sounds a bit she should really be saying that. I find you so attractive. Even when you're in church and you're leading this, I just feel like, uh, like I, I'm, I have to restrain myself from thinking, yes. Uh, uh, what is, uh, uh, uh. If you're back too, I don't like it. Are you judging in my words? 
I'm, I, you know, I, I just have to restrain myself. When a man is verbalizing his restraint, you don't need to tell me what you're doing. It's your consecration. Yeah, there were times I went to visit my husband. We're in the house together. We're gisting. He serves me food. And he just walks out. I'm like, what's in Munyu daddy? See you. Yes. The, sorry, I said it's Yoruba. Basically, he will get and say, you have to go now. And he'll see me off to the car, pay for the car, and I'll be like, hmm, the thing is catching the old. We had such mature conversations that were healthy, but that were clean about sex because we're both virgins and we knew what we're keeping ourselves for. But we're also upfront. Do you see what I mean? That, so the man is talking to you about restraint. You maybe should get a bit worried. Why are you telling me you, that it's hard, you are holding yourself, you are, it was just a bit tough on you? Guess what he does next? Brings out his manhood from his boxers and asks her to touch it. That just, oh, your guy is. <laughs> Are you people saying oh, my English is bad? Somebody said, oh, my guy is. <laughs> you are still my mentor. <laughs> That's what he did. That helped me to calm it down. You like Jesus. Amen. So let me take you back. All that long gist is to this principle. The Lord can lead you, instruct you, and open your eyes to his son, a man of God, ordained for you. And the Lord can rescind on that deal to preserve you. Because you look many times when, so before the Lord starts to talk to you about marriage and talk to a man about marriage, he's preparing you for life and for destiny, isn't it? Obey, do this. If you don't take action on everyday instruction, you will lengthen the time it will take him to bring you into a marital season. Because you need to be at a minimum qualification for him to present you to a son who is his also. You are thinking about yourself, I want to be married. He's saying, but this guy is also my son. Should I present you with this drama? So he's preparing you, isn't it? He's preparing him also. Sometimes when the Lord finds a daughter who has a lot of koinonia with him, I don't know how to say it, but it's friendship. Sometimes you didn't mean to share something, but you guys are just now like, hey, do you know? In friendship and intimacy, a part of your heart, you bring it out, isn't it? Something you've been thinking, you didn't even prepare to say it. And I'm not saying God doesn't prepare to say it. What I'm saying is, in the secret place, he'll just share a secret with you. You're just worshiping, you're having fun, and he's like, he's almost thinking aloud with you. That this guy is on my mind for you. And that's why sometimes it seems like, from what I've seen, my little experience is like, about 50 to 60% of the time, the woman actually hears first. Because you're like a custodian of God's secrets in koinonia, it's warmth, it's intimate, and he just says, this person I'm thinking about for you. The moment he says it, he intensifies preparation so that the man also comes up to speed with what he's doing so that he can join you together. Yeah? Or sometimes the guy is ready waiting. And he and God have had this conversation about, Father, I'm ready. And he's saying, I'm going to sort you. I'll fix you. And speaks to you and start to prepare you to bring you up to speed with this man. Do you see what I mean? Meaning that the Lord spoke about a spiritual prototype to you, vouching in trust that that man will yield to God's preparation so that he can be ready for you. But that process might not go that way. It is possible that though it was God's desire, this guy persisted not to grow up in the areas where he's weak. And God waits a season, a cycle, sending the right information to him, convicting him, asking him to come out to be healed of an addiction, talk to your pastor, get that book, you know, and he does not line up. And the father has to say, I know I spoke to you about it, but, you know, your interest is more important than... Um, coming across as if you heard me. You heard me. Mm? 
But the proof that you heard me, especially when another human being is involved, is not always that they will hear too. Do you see what I mean? So be healed of your malice with God. Be healed of it. If you knew what he was saving you from, and I know you're also there saying, but he's still married someone else, a fine girl, and the wedding was glamorous, and it just feels like, don't do that thing. Just leave it. Just leave it. Didn't he marry someone else? I mean, he met someone after, it seems I wasn't good enough. Is the enemy messing up with your mind? He wasn't good enough. There are those situations. Amen. A final scenario, which is real, very possible. Two people start to cut. They both heard God. After a while, the father himself says, out to the lady, hopefully, or to the guy. People criticize this person, stigmatize them and say, Shabi, you said God told you. That's how you people will not be able to make up your mind. You've seen someone and you've left. It is possible for you to outgrow someone. And if it is not marriage, God wants you to have the best. A guy who just stays stunted, insecure, unable to see ahead of himself, refusing to see the anointing, the assignment on your life, putting you under, having Badu chats and Facebook underground chats with other babes, getting into pornography and the father chills and is like, get out. I have something good for you. You are that, your daddy's girl. You are precious. So if anyone asks you for your answer, in case that's you, if they are close and they really want the truth, Ask them basically, ever heard of a person outgrowing another? Do you know it's scriptural? Study it, tell me what you find. You need to have an answer. But you, you can't have an answer if you don't have revelation knowledge. So you are in a good place. I'm in a good place. I'm in a good place. Okay? When we come to, when we are on the art of um, waiting, I would also share with you possible scenarios why you are unmarried because it's all sounding now like it's you who are on the great side and they're just these guys out there it's possible you were not on the great side too and some of us are honestly aware that you missed a season of marriage because you could not discern a man of God you know okay so, uh, under the sun, the man of God, how do I understand spiritual prototypes? What are scriptural profiles of the sort of man that God prepares for his daughters? How do I discern a man mentored by God? What am I to look out for? What should I not focus on? And then, how do I hear God clearly? What are the signs that God is leading me? Okay? And then, of course, we're also going to look at how do I confirm if I'm in a divinely ordained relationship? Okay? Because there are some of us who are currently in relationships, but you are saying, am I certain that this is God's deal for me? Because I want to get it right in that area, okay? Does that seem like it's going to bless you? It's going to bless you. Okay, class five, we'll go on to preparing yourself for your marital season. So how do I get um, the right cleansing in my soul? How do I get the healing I require? What sort of negative emotions might I have accumulated over the years that can hold me back, you know, from experiencing what the Lord has for me? Um, so how do I start to prepare myself? And we will, um, in fact, before we get into that class, we would have provided some confessions on healing. And we would also run a few tests that will help you come up to speed and face yourself with some um, emotional issues that you might have had that could be standing in your way. Okay? So um, that's where we look at mindsets and limiting beliefs that can be holding us back. I actually remember that before I got married, as I started to pray to God and confess that I was getting to my seizing and all that, um, the Lord said to me that he wanted to uncover to me mindsets that I have that were holding me back from him bringing the money had for me. You know, and I'm thinking, me, like, uh, I've been praying about this thing, and, you know, I have your word about it, and I'm, I'm sort of growing as a believer. So I thought I was really cool. 
You know, but it is the, it's the word of God that shines the light on us that makes everything bare. And we desperately need that in our lives. How many of you are reading Firebrand and have come to that chapter that talks about the allegory of the mirror? How many of us? Ah, oh, these women have not, hey, you have not gotten Firebrand. No, you have to read Firebrand. It's your second recommended text. Honestly. Ah, you are saying, oh my God, it's the game. <laughs> you should get it. I just really encourage you to get it. You should get it. I mean, and I could even say to you that, look, when you get on fire, when your altar is alive, when you get aligned and you are for God and for purpose, you are more attractive. And it's more committed to the idea of, I need to search you. And, I need, because, and it's not because marriage makes you better. It is because scripturally, two will chase tens of thousands. It's a multiplier effect in the favor of God. It is in his interest that his daughters should be established with their men of God. No matter how much you want it, God wants it more. Because he's an investor and it's multiple return on investment. So you should actually read Firebrand and start to use it so that you can get on speed, you know, with your spiritual journey. So I decided to say those things to me. And um, I will share three of the things he said to me very clearly. He said at different times. But if you have a writing culture, which I'm also going to really encourage you, show me your journals. Your journal for Supernatural Marriage Cause. Mm, I like your journal. Fantastic. Let me see your journals. How can you have your hand like this? Where's your journal, darling? Correct. Where, woman of God, where's your journal? Where's your journal? Some people have really pretty journals. Where's your journal, sweet? Fantastic. Fantastic. So if you also have a writing culture, you are actually still going to get another journal. Or you split your journal into two. The only reason is, I would say another journal is, you don't want to forget it and you've written some. Victor, you have a journal too. <laughs> yes, so he's a single guy, man. I'm telling you. You know, one of the greatest validations I get from my husband is that when I share things that I share with Ladies, maybe a message I preached, he listens to it, or an email I sent, or a cause I'm running. He'll be like, this thing is for the body. It's not for women only. You are sent to the body. Stop feeling like you're sent to women only. I'm like, uh, God just told me about women. Let me hey, let it turn on. You should have immersed for men. This is a spiritual married thing. You should bring men in. I'm like, ah, we talk about them a lot. They should not be in the room. You know, but he says these principles are valid and can be, you know, used by any of the genders. You know, he really thinks that I'm, I'm just all that, you know. So even when you want to doubt it, I just like, even nobody believed it. This guy believed it. And that should be okay. But you have to believe it for yourself. I've seen a, a woman saved by minutes from suicide because she didn't believe in her. Even though her husband, you know. I mean, he showed me letters when, this, when she started a, a, a counseling and, you know, just trying to get through scriptural therapy to be healed. You need to confront, and, and we're going to do that at the early part of this program, you need to confront the you that you see on your inside. And sometimes these things are deeply foundational. They're from childhood. If you don't fix that identity under the light of God's word, it's going to hold, it could hold you back. And even, it's not just about marriage, you could actually get married, but you, you could become a burden to your man. Because he's spending everything to just always have to convince you and say you are great enough and all that. Okay? So, um, where was I really? Yeah, so, um, I, I said when we get to preparing yourself and we're looking at cleansing and healing, you know, from past pain, severe heartbreak, there's actually a methodology for getting out of a severe heartbreak. And we're going to look at it, okay? Um, how do I renounce the mindset and limiting beliefs that can prolong my journey and not get me ready for my season? And I said while praying and just confessing um, to activate you know, my marital season, actually because the Lord told me to start to do so, I literally forgot about it as a season in my life and I'm like, 
okay, you'll sort it. I'm going to just focus on you and on your kingdom. And he literally started to say to me, now is the time. Start to pray again, you know. Um, so as I started to confess and declare and pray and, you know, use scriptures and write things he put in my heart, he started to say to me, there are mindsets and limiting beliefs that cannot make you see the man I have for you. What godless mindsets do is that they put a cataract over your eyes. You would either see the man as just a brother or you would not see him at all. So your mindset has to be accurate and right so that regardless of how he looks, you can quickly look into who he is on the inside. Do you see what I mean? Meaning that if he looks great and is not him on the inside, you walk up us quickly. If it doesn't look great and that's a spiritual prototype, you ask questions. And they didn't even tell us early we could ask questions. You can ask questions. You can ask the Lord questions. You know, rather than like a person and feel guilty like, hey, I think I'm liking this person. You can talk to God about like, I think I'm liking this guy. What, what do you think? What do you say? So that I can quickly guide you. How many of you have asked God that before? Correct. I know some of you, you are not raising your hand, but you are doing it. No, no. You are liking someone now, but you're not raising your hand. God is really watching you in 38D. So he said to me three things. I mean, I'm, uh, he said a number of things to me. I'll share three. And I kept writing them that when it comes to my heart again, you know, I will just think a thought and it will literally hold that thought. You'll be like, yes, that's another mindset I don't want to see. I'll write it. So I'll share three. The first is I thought that it will take a pastor or a spiritual leader who was running a certain type of vision to be able to be married to me so that he could understand that I had a calling and will create room for me to be that woman. Do you see what I mean? So it sounded noble. Isn't it sounding noble? Like a spiritual leader, pastor, you know, I was not one of the people who didn't want to, to be married to pastors. I wanted to be a pastor, be married to a pastor, give birth to pastors, raise other pastors, eat with pastors, whatever. Maybe not that serious, but I, I was open. I was very open. So for those, I, I've noticed somehow that those who don't want it, it now comes to you. It's better you want it and Lord says, okay, since you want it, don't worry. But that's not even how it works. If it's his plan for you, you want it or you don't want it, he's going to put you there. Okay? So I thought that it will take a pastor, a spiritual leader for me to come into, uh, for me to be able to express my divine assignment. Do you see what I mean? And be able to, you know, because it will require traveling the world at, uh, as it goes, grows larger. I will have children. It takes a level of understanding and revelation to let your woman out of your sight with, you know, children without taking the children along, that sort of thing. So I had that in my mind. Secondly, and don't judge me, I, be, I, I said I was willing to wait for the man to have a decent amount of money. I'm like, I'm not really rushing. You know, you can be fixing the guy, getting money. I will, I will stay single. I cannot climb bike to join a guy on another bike in Mr. Biggs. I'm unable. The capacity is not ableness within me. Like, wait. I can't. So I'm like, he has to have a car. Like, a car is like breathing to me. As at that time, I'm like... Jesus saw you. <laughs> oh, amazing. I think I love you already. You actually said thank you. Jesus and the angels are smiling now. <laughs> and those of you who didn't say it out but thought it, Jesus also. <laughs> Amen. By the way, the biggest liberty I experienced with my mind, thinking right thoughts, was the day the Lord said to me, your thoughts are very loud to me. Like, I hear them so clearly. It's like a conversation. So it's not, oh, I thought that thought, but well, it's just in my mind. I can hear your thoughts so clearly. So your mind needs to be renewed constantly. You need that detox constantly with the word of God. So he said that to me. Um, so the second thing I said was, you need a decent amount of money. <clears throat> and that decent amount of money means you have an apartment. Because I'm not dating you for 28 years. Have an apartment so that we can have introduction in nine months. Have an apartment. And I don't want to search for an apartment with you. Have it. Furnish it. 
I'm not doing. Let's go and check here. Mm -mm. <laughs> then we'll be talking to landlord together. Then you are saying it's 385 per year. And you're saying, Debo, I have two nights. How much more? Mm -mm. Just fix it, guy. Fix it. So I definitely had that. Have an apartment. Have a car. Pick me up. Take me home. By the way, I had a car. I, okay, well, I wasn't keen. I wasn't keen. I'm just like, if you have money and you're respectful to me, don't open the door. But, you know, you can buy me a car and get me a driver. Who would open the door? Have money. Do you get, don't worry. You, you know, it can even be annoying when a guy is romantic and is not able to. You are like, bad bear. Like, I want to climb your car. You're not like, let me help your legs. Get a car. So that was my second mindset. That was not great. My third mindset that I want to share was that I expected that the person was coming completely outside my current circle of friendships. So anytime I envisioned it and visualized it, and Lord said to me, at least 70% of the time, your husband is already around you. these sisters some people are like no some people are like Jesus I've looked around I used a microscope I checked deeply Lord I don't see anyone bring him a fresh ogre I'm open to US and UK Lord. Jesus I'm ready oh God for Canada oh Lord I don't see him here and the Lord says Below my be, beloved daughter, look behind you. I'm like, the only person behind me is our keyboard is, but no, Lord. Huh? I know what you mean, Lord. <laughs> so that's the third thing that he said to me. I was basically just visualizing again one of those days, and I'm like, ah, maybe I go to minister somewhere. And the invited person also, they'll just be like, please welcome with us a great man of God. A man of the word of substance. He's taught here for seven years. A powerful ministry gifts. He's a great teacher of the word and author of six books, including the bestseller, God's Vision for Family. Welcome with us all the way from the United States of America, Pastor. I'm just like, then after the meeting, just like, I really, I really admire you. And I'm like, yeah, let's do this. Then we travel out. <laughs> you know why my case is better? I'm saying my own. Your people don't say your own, but it's the same thing. <laughs> is it not the same? Those of you who don't want men of God, your own is just that maybe you want to pitch at this multinational. You're just going to do your, yeah. <laughs> so you go to pitch and, you know, they're like, we can't start. We have uh, the West African regional director. He makes a final decision on this. Then this guy, before he came in, the perfume was just wading through. You're like, then he just trots in like... <laughs> you people because we are the same so you're just there then your pitch was not die you know then the guy just buzzed you like can we can we just have this power dinner to tidy up the pitch you know like this is too unbelievable we've been waiting for your solution you just saw yourself strutting into southern sun you're just like your hair is just so the lord said to me you don't need a pastor you need a son of god a son of God is not a pastor. A pastor is not necessarily a son of God. So he said, I will show you my son. And he's not going to look like it. But it's the one. Ewa wood stove. Because all deep has gone. I'm not sure I can have you in my class. Because you are ruining my hopes of getting better. In preparation for the global assignment. So he fixed that. The second thing he said to me was that you can't serve God and mammon. He said, and that is not to say anything about whether he's coming with money or not, but your mind will make you miss him. So I'm not saying he's going to be wealthy or he's going to put you on bikes. If he does, it will be fine. You can't serve God and mammon. You are in, it's impossible to keep a dual vision on God's purpose for your life at the same time on money. 
you'd have to choose. And it's not just for marriage, it speaks to everything in our lives. That's why some of us will choose jobs that can't pay the bills, but that will become preparation for destiny. Mm -hmm. So he said that to me. Now, third thing he said to me, what's the third gist? Secular friendships. He said, Deborah, 70% of the time, for my daughters, your husband is already around you. God works in ripples. In ripples. In ripples. There's the core. There's the inner circle. There is the acquaintance and outer friendship. There is the, there is the community that you belong, but you don't have any personal relationship. And there is the general public. God walks from the inner. He walks from the core. So about 30% of the time, your husband is actually in the core of a, a close-knit friendship you have. Another 20 to 30% of the time, he is in the immediate inner circle. That's why there are marriages, a lot of marriages meant to happen in church, but mindsets will not let people cooperate. They're always looking for the guy that is in Elevation Church because they don't want to marry in CSC. God is watching you. Elevation Church is my church. No, I didn't mean it negatively. Pastor Bola Rewa is my mama. I love them. I'm just saying, you know what I mean. Maybe the Lord is speaking to you, mama. <laughs> Are you with me on that? I think that's about one of the most powerful things I could share with you today. God walks in ripples. It's first from the inner circle and the probabilities are leaner as you go out in terms of from the, in, from the core to the inner circle and then to close-knit friendships and acquaintances and then to a general community and then the public. There are lesser times the Lord is bringing him from the public. Lesser times. Lesser times. More times his hair, and some of you are just saying, I've abused all the, all the guys, all my male friends. You know, I, I, I was with, uh, like, a younger sister when I went to minister in Erua, and I'm going back there, you know, and, by the way, when we Nikke, when we went, and I mean, she was such a great blessing. She's your hands-on, you know, project manager, Miss Fix-It. Who went again with me that time? That is here. None. Okay, I think it was Sarah, myself, Titi, only, yes. You know, so um, we sort of reconnected after the meeting and I was generally just teasing her. No, no, before we even left. So there were a few guys right in church um, that I was gisting with her and them. So I was saying to one of the guys who played keyboard that, ah, you are fine. You can play keyboard. And, you know, Pastor Tim was now even saying more things like he's really good though. He can do this and that. So I turned to him and I'm like, Hmm, look at this fine brother. I hadn't said anything else. I just said, hmm, look at the fine brother. He said, really fine brother. Uh. And she slapped him on the chest and said, uh, it's not a bro, Mini. So I actually faced her and I said, meaning he's my younger brother. So I faced her and I said, is he really younger? She said, no, he's older than me. I'm just joking. <laughs> so when I left, I said to her, is, is that how you joke with all the guys? And she says, uh. I said, do you know your husband could be one of them? She said, la, ye, uh. I said, you have a clock on. With that sort of mindset, you can't even hear God. Literally slapped this grown, well-built man. Ah, uh, this one. You are just joking with everything, Abby. Uh, you know, some of us are so close. People are so close to us, we can't see them again. You will ask God to open your eyes afresh. I'm telling you. So he healed me of those things. He's not coming from the United States of America. Please welcome all the way from UK mm -hmm, is here around you. So he healed me. I prayed about those things. No, and I'm not saying those of you have a vision for US. It can't see you. I'm not touching that vision. So, I mean, the Lord healed me of those things. And when he arrived, he came with a car. Isn't it great? I'm like, yes, Lord, you healed me. But thank you for still sorting that. So I had a car. We went out, uh, you know, to eat one day. And, you know, we're coming back. We're going to the car. We're passing through Yaba and the car stops. So I'm like, it's just one of those things. I mean, the AC is down. So I'm sort of, oh, it's a bit warm though. Like, when is it going to be fixed? Kilo Shela, is it fuel? And I see that there's a serious situation because it's like, 
Um, I don't think this car's going to move. Uh, this is what you do for me. You calm down. Wabami Timotui. I'm like, no, th- no. You know, I said, we, I don't get it. Like, you, there's a way you can do it. Like, you jack, then you move it. But it's like, it's automatic. It's not going to move. So, um, while I just put it, you, you got to push. And it was having this secure, serious look like, no big deal. My legs are shaking as I come out like, you saw me, you still brought me here, B. My sister in the Jesus, I pushed it. With dignity, with passion. Oh, I pushed it, baby. You know, you know why you're embarrassed? You're not from fine girl. Like... I pushed it. I so pushed it. To a safe abo. But guess what? That was the day I knew beyond a doubt that I would marry my husband. His sense of security is untouchable. He came down, he was like, fantastic, good job, girl. Um, Jem, well, was a cab, so you just saw yourself fix it. You good? I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> no big deal. We walked there, he's gisting, he's talking, he's laughing about it like, that car wants to mess up your fine girl, but don't worry. I mean, you're already taken now, so hey. Nobody, nobody cares. I'm like, they care. What do you mean nobody cares? <laughs> we laugh about it. We, you know, he gets to, and that is how he's handled everything in the eight years of knowing him. There's nothing that becomes the matter of, this will make me feel like I'm not man enough. We don't have money. He's talking calmly. It's like, we're going to fix this. Um, so my strategy, and you're thinking, Mr. Ma, strategy K. <laughs> there is rain that we will pay. But we don't push cars anymore. We don't wait to sort rent anymore. But we're there at a time. And this Puchin mattered. I still marry and push another one again. Only is I'm like, God, divorce me from pushing. <laughs> Fix this car. You know, God be praised. So that's what happened in what class? Class five. In class five, we are then doing, um, how can I prepare myself, be grounded in my identity, discover my purpose. Beyond the sessions, there'll be a lot of materials to read, you know, and I would encourage to read. There'll be things to, um, uh, audio messages to listen to, watch videos. Give everything your best so that you can propel yourself, you know, and show that you're ready so that the seasons can be activated. I will have that session with Yemisi Verse. Um, and I love her story because she was a single mom, a struggling, broke, angry, bitter single mom before she, um, before her husband came. But the moment the Lord started to speak to her about letting go of any hurts, letting go of any anger, and just facing him, you know, things started to happen faster. And she had gone on a retreat in Ghana just to spend time with God and to pray and it was right there that the Lord started to speak to about husband and even went ahead to say, he's right here in this city with you. I brought you both to this city and I'm speaking to him at this time too. They met in the plane and he raised this East Street. So, I mean, you're here, you're a single mom, you feel like you have an active sexual past, you feel like you've been named, you know, with the stuff you did in your past, there's no holding you back. God is God is sorted already. You know, God is, God is sorted already. So um, she's going to be in that session where we're looking at how can I prepare myself um, ahead of this season that is about to open. In class six, we're going to be having catalyst seeds and um, the covenant procedure for activating your season. So I'll be sharing with you things you can start to do, things you can start to say, and things you can start to create that will quicken your season, that will facilitate it, that will fast track it. Do you understand? So your catalyst seeds. And like I said before, I'll continue to say, these are tested algorithms in God. Do you see what I mean? Okay? So seeing people who are in a relationship can go ahead to get married this year. People who are not seeing anyone, don't have anyone in mind. Some can get married this year. And some can go ahead to be established in an exciting relationship, God ordained, and get married next year. Do you see what I mean? But the minimum goal is to be joined to your man of destiny this year. You know, and it is possible because God desires for that to happen. It's in his plan for you. 
And then it gets more exciting because we have that word. How many of you have checked words on the group? Did you read uh, that initial? Po- ha, how many of you have read it? We're going to have to check the group a lot and read what, you know, we put up. And for those who are not on the group, um, you know, you are also going to be signed on after now. So you need to send in an email, fill the registration so we can take it forward. Okay? So we'll look at Catalyst and how to quicken and provoke a prophetic season maritally. Okay? So that's class six. And I'm going to be having that with Pastor Bukola Ikane. And um, it will definitely be a blessing to you. Mm, sorry. Sorry, I've missed, uh, I've missed my facilitators. God's plan for your marriage or God's plan for marriage, what does he consider with the great union? It's a C, it's class two. I have it with Pastor Vincent Arifalo. Class three, the art of waiting is with Fikayo Adeginka. Class four, discerning a man of God and, you know, learning to hear God, knowing the profiles of spiritual prototypes and all that is with Yemisi Vese. Class five, preparing yourself is with Pastor Buki in Kane. Okay? It's class six, catalyst seeds, and, you know, the covenant procedure for expediting your process in God, quickening your process in God, and, you know, busting forth into your marital season is currently my session alone. Um, I trust God to show me whoever he has in his heart. It's in class six that we're going to have our assignment of crafting your own confession, which will now become your paddy going forward. Um, and I'll also share with you my own confessions, which I used, you know, ahead of getting um, or d- discovering that my husband was the he that we waited for that was to come. Um, and on to the point that he came on to get married and all that. So that's why we craft our confessions. And then class seven is uh, review sessions, a lot of questions and answers, and then prophetic release into your supernatural marriage season. And I will have that with... Um, Pastor Dotonari follow and would have Chioma leading worship. So that's why I was having the argument because he told me to write her name and I was like, is Chioma going to come? And she says, oh, she's going to be here. I said, she's only from the mainland. And she's here. Okay? So that's how the curriculum looks like. Um, it, could be, it could be a six-month program. I mean, there are courtship courses that run for six months, that run for eight months. But this is your crash course in that sense, you know, so that you can get on into um, what the Father has prepared for you. We're going to spend the next few minutes collapsing ourselves into smaller groups before we leave. But let me say this again to you. Let me say it again to you. Um, It's in the gist I put on the group. Deb, were you looking at the group? Because I think a number of people were asking for directions and all that. Okay, okay. So let me read to you what the Lord said to us. He gave us a word. I missed the things he said to us about 2018. He's been speaking at the, at the end of years to begin a new year from year 2012 corporately to me. And we literally see these things come to pass. DIW women, am I right? We're going to the year and we see proofs. In fact, one of the things that also maybe sort of excites or encourages you is that you see other houses other fathers of faith sharing exactly the same thing. You know, and this year was as though, you know, what the Lord has said through me and the things he shared with my spiritual father were just so exact. I mean, there's no greater validation for, for a young woman. But beyond that, in a lot of other churches also, the Spirit of God is saying the same thing. And these things that he shares with us, we see year on year. So the man decided to speak to me about 2018 and 2017. He also started to instruct me about the things to do to activate that season and to bring it to pass because it's not just the word of prophecy that brings us into our season. It's what we do with the word of prophecy. You know, so I want to read to you what he said specifically about marriage. It was on the account of that word that he went ahead to instruct me to hold the supernatural marriage cause so that he can so that he can bring his daughters to a place where they, with scriptural wisdom and the power of the Holy Spirit, activate that season. Since it is what he wants to do anyway, the most beautiful times of my life are the times where I discern that God wants to do a thing and I line up behind it. When God already wants to do a thing and you discover it and you line up with it, 
your prosperity will be abundant. I'm telling you. Because is anyway going to do it? So you just line up and you're like, thank you, Father, for this which you say you will do. Glory to God because I believe you align myself to it. I embrace it as my reality. Thank you because look at me. I, just last year, I was in a relationship or I was just out of a relationship. I was tired, angry. Look at me today. The wedding, wedding dates are fixed. I love my wedding gown. It's a destination wedding. But more importantly, he's a man of God with whom we'll do destiny. And you start to declare. And sometimes those declarations, you don't say it loud or you say it alone because your younger son can just peep and say, Shavu okay, ma. You know, but if they're not things you are declaring in your eyes, the eyes have not yet seen, ears have not heard, heard, but have been revealed to you by the Holy Spirit, you are not accurate. You must be rejoicing about a manifestation that you have not seen materially, but you have interacted with in your heart. So look at what he said to us. Um, to, to read it out, to establish a context. Okay, I'm looking for it now. So one of the things he said about 2018 is that 2018 is a year for marriages. The spirit of the living God will flow like a wind from the four corners of the earth to join God's sons and daughters in supernatural marriage experiences that will defy human understanding and the natural progression of things. Did you hear that? It will defy the natural progression of things, meaning that it will not just be done, it will be done quickly. People will expect that when you meet the person, you guys are friends for four months, he starts to like you, by the six months they asked you out, then by one year after you do introduction, then after four months you now get married, and the Lord is saying, mm -mm. like he's meeting you, he's saying, come, come get married, and I'm like, hey, what, what's that? Take it easy. That's what happens, happened to a, uh, you know, one of my uh, spiritual daughters, went to Rwanda for a project, met this person also who came to Rwanda. They were on the project together for a week and a half. They are traveling back in the plane. It's like, I know this is crazy. You know. I know this is crazy, but can we get married? And she's like, can you chill off, man? What's up? You know. And months down the line, they're indeed married. And that's not the bigger deal. The bigger deal is this person, these people love the Lord. These people are growing in God. And when you hear the behind the scene, whatever you think you hear on social media is nothing. The behind the scene is real covenant. It's great stuff. Doing kingdom. Doing life together. Amen. And I'm going to share a story, a part of my story with you that would be an unrecorded edition. And there will be a lot of those things that we don't record. That's why people should be present physically. Because they can't be captured in tape. But it's a proof that even when they are parental hesitations the Lord can step into it by a dream where it just has a conversation Hello? you're like yes daddy they wake up and they're calling you you're like um, I would have to ask my parents though but you know you've been confessing and declaring it must be so amen how many of you want some miracles in your life this year that you were hungry for but when it comes you're just like uh, okay let me think about it but you are jumping inside you. <laughs> Amen. Glory be to God. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to get it out again. I don't know why it keeps turning off. You know, so he said it's a year for marriage. He said that he will, the Holy Spirit of the living God will flow like a wind from the four corners of the earth to join God's sons and daughters in supernatural marriage experiences that will defy human understanding and the natural progression of things. There will be many women in their 40s and their 50s who will also become connected to tested and trusted men, full of faith and the Holy Spirit, prepared in private and now presented in public. Please, this woman was repeating the words line after line. You see, she's already showing me something. Kumbi Adeoye, where are you? Please stand up. You remember the, the singles confession we had for DIW women? When we were, so I handed to single women, I said, I confess these things, they work for me. Hey, how many DIW women literally saw their divine season happen because of the power of confession in the house? 
I mean, I'm going to have to call a number of you to, to, to testify. Sorry. Most of them are already married. That's why you didn't see hands. That's actually, I just, I, because I'm already like, Nikkei, you should be screaming. Oh, they're married. Oh, they're married. I'm telling you. Because God is no respecter of persons. He has a logic. You line up to the logic. It happens for you too. What does he pay God that you're not married? When you should be. You are distracted. Put all the egg in one basket. You are a man of God. Facing destiny, you go. All this is him. Igbo. It's Ausa. It's Calabar. Lord. It's from the Middle East. Shall it be him? You are healed of it. Or shall he not, Lord? That phase is passing off in the name of Jesus. So I handed it to them. I'm like, this thing works, so it really works. Let's start to declare. We'll have meetings. We'll declare. Something started to happen. There were some crazy girls. The Jade Fawales, who have now become Jade meeting rooms of this world. The Kumbi Adeoyes. They'll be in front. They will not, so we'll print the sheets and be praying with it. I declare that my man of God finds me. If it's in my circle of influence, he imagines distinctly in my heart, and I in his, and the Lord, la la la, Tutu is also declaring it. These babes will be in front. They will not use the paper, they will drop it. They'll be saying it word for word. And I declare, Lord, I'm talking about three, four pages of confession. They said it so much that they became one with it. Do you get what I mean? And in a few months, we're actually using aeroplane to go and do what we're supposed to do because the season and the hour has come. Oh, you should tap into that and really rejoice. And really rejoice. Please don't leave. Are you here for the cause? DIW women, are you really seated? They are here, please. There are seats for you here. Ah, please be bounced in Jesus' name. Be bounced, be bounced. Amen. So I'm already, I'm already tripped. Listen, guys, because we're getting into our groups now, we're out here in 20 minutes. Listen, guys, did you see that? As I started to read, she was reading along without... Re- so some people are on the group, but they're still like, let's see what they're here to do. A, a, a manifesto has been dropped by the Holy Spirit about how to prepare us for this whole course. Some people haven't read it. That's why results will differ. It will not only differ in outcome, whether it happens or not, it would also differ in timing, how early it happens. So you commit to being one of those that it will happen for and happen quickly. A word comes, you sit with it, you repeat it, you pray with it. Look, there is nothing shameful before God about being desperate in a positive way. I'm talking about the type of Elisha desperation. You turn me back, I'm like, nope. I'm following you wherever you go, I'm going. I'm talking about the Ruth desperation. As the Lord lives and and his spirit also, your people will be my people. That type of thing. That type of thing. Because the bigger deal is, some things will come into your spirit, man, under the atmosphere of revelation knowledge that I will not say. Do you get? How many of you does it happen to you? You're in church, you're writing down. People think you're writing a message. You're writing another thing. He's talking to you, you're just writing. That happened to me today. I was writing. My husband even had to ask that. "Ah, ah, That word, oh deep God, I just saw you flipping pages. I'm like, because it was not preaching. I hope he doesn't listen to his message. Because it was like, I mean, that word was something. Because you just kept writing, writing. I'm like, yeah. um, I was writing other things. Do you see what I mean? So the, the attitude has to be right. And it is in you. It is called the birthing attitude. When a woman is about to birth a thing, you don't cross your leg with makeup, doing, oh gosh, this serious stuff. God, oh, I'm really having pain here. Oh. Except you're an epidural. Except if it's epidural. Or you're having a C-section. And none of those processes are less supernatural. That's not what I mean. But I'm saying if you're having a natural birthing experience, you don't, for, you don't remember your middle name. You are not trying to be a babe. If it's weak, you have flung it. By the way, they would have removed it for you. They will get you ready anyway. The dressing should even give you an idea what's going to go down. They have put net on your head anyway. 
because they know you can mistakenly want to pull your birthing posture. You are like this. Whatever it's going to take, we'll give it to this because it's just a season. Let's cuckoo quickly do this. Push your leg. Mm, there's a push from here. You, ah! That's how you do it. Anything drops, you read it. You write in your journal again. You barrow, say, the cold shot tire. Not in the above. Well, anyway, me could say, mm-hmm. Let's go quickly do it. There's a word. He wants you to be married this year anyway. Or at least be joined in a covenant relationship with your man of destiny. Let's quickly be looking at the Saturdays in December. Circle your own. Hold it. And quickly. Especially if you're in a church like Desta. You know, counseling many. So you quickly say, sir. Sir, I've not met him, but December 32, we are just... Don't worry, it's not 32. If you're in a large church, quickly go. So what's the process, though? Um, if you want to get married first Saturday in December, what's the process, though? Yeah, congrats. So thank you, sir. <laughs> Amen. When a few of my younger cousins were getting married and will go to the weddings, my mom will sit at the corner. So if she calls me to come and serve... Um, uh, you know, meals. At least that happened to them some two, three times. So come and serve. They're, ah, come and serve for auntie on this table. That's sort of thing. And I get there and they're saying, ah, auntie, I know Adeo. She'll say, ah, well, we'll send you Ivy very soon. We thank God. Hey, my boy would, uh, would inform you. I was not in a relationship. That woman is crazy. <laughs> when they say, auntie, I know Adeo, meaning, oh, the Lord will do it for you too. She's like, ah, we're sending you Ivy soon. Please don't talk. Later, we'll explain everything. <laughs> I was just like, because in my mind, I was happy to say, yeah, in, God, in good time, I'm not under pressure. But she wouldn't even allow that. She'd be like, well, well Ivy's are even ready. Ooh, she's still about to meet. <laughs> Amen. So he said, um, women in their 40s and 50s will be connected to tested and trusted men, full of faith and the Holy Spirit, prepared in private and now presented in public. He said, marriages are a tool for the end time. I will use marriages, says the Lord, to save the lost, rescue the drowning, rehabilitate those on the streets. I will heal homes and institute hospitals within families. This will happen everywhere I see music. I will cohabit with husbands and wives who have been caught up in worship. Within those homes, I will set, I will send the sick in society to come for healing and to be restored. He said, marriage is, marriage is important to me, and so I'm the general overseer of the choices that will be made by my children in 2018. There will be swift and strong connections between sons and daughters, and those who are felt delayed or forgotten will come up strong on this scene with an advantage. The year will close with surprises, as the most unlikely will be crowned just like Esther was preferred amongst those selected for the king. That's a good word. A good, good word. Be healed of your doubts in Jesus' name. Because you must see yourself in that scripture. You must be like, that's me. That is me. Because that's you. Okay? So what we're doing in the course of the week, when we pray on Tuesday, and when I send you your confessions, as well as your assessment, this is what we're focusing on for now. And we're going to be pairing it with that scripture in Isaiah 55, that any word that goes forth from the mouth of the Lord will not return to him void. Amen. Have you had a great time today already? I've had a superb time. I am so, so, so excited. Okay?